Welcome to Stephen Johnson's stocks. Um, roughly a five hundred dollar red month. Tough month. A lot of things to adjust to. Ultimately, it was one point five after fees. I don't think I've put them. I think I'm okay. Um, but there was a lot of changes. I was kind of moving home, switching advertising for trading, full time job, moving home, feeling like I need to prove myself, change of environment. A lot of reasons to kind of catch this red month, but I, I, I think it was two things mainly. A, I felt like I needed to make money in a quiet market, got frustrated, which September is traditionally the quietest month of the year. And B, I really got confused by some statistics. And I'll just dive straight into the statistics because it's the most important kind of part of the video, in my opinion. But um, the first was this. So in my favorite setup, generally, it's like, stocks that gap up um and the volume on the day that the gap up is more than previous resistance but it's still a downtrend in chart i'll show you an example in a minute but but basically these these stocks that gap have resistance but it still has more volume on the day than than the resistance it's not my favorite setup but it's a good setup for us um i found that and but i could just quickly show you so for example this is one where the volume here is high, there's resistance yeah on the left hand side but the volume is more on the day than than the resistance levels if that makes sense so i mean i found that like 67 percent of these fail like 12 percent will hold within a region 20 percent will will go so really like honestly speaking like you're talking like if you add it like generally the ones that hold they'll push 10 percent and come back down so 66 about one in five will actually go like one in five so that's that's not really a lot. And that put myself, that put me into a false pretense of thinking, oh, I can just show whatever because only one in five go of these these gap as like SAV as an example. Um SVRA is an example of gap it had the volume, but the resistance isn't isn't as high. But then I've started doing other research because I found out that in September I was just losing all the time. And I started finding that this is an example of I started tracking the intraday performance of the stock because I was like, well, a lot of these stocks are failing, but they're running 50% during the day before the fail. So just for example, looking at stocks alone that trade 50 million, the high of the high of day after the open on average will be around 41%. Some will trade like some will go as high as 60% from the opening price. So they'll gap a shitload. They'll gap loads like a 300% gap, a 61% gap, a 25% gap, but then they'll have that on top. This after the open, there's 60%, 25, 40, 54%, but on average, a 42% push. And that's why I was going really wrong because I was averaging in or shorting too early, biased, confused, confused, biased towards the data. I think, well, three, three, four, five out of every, say, six of these fail. So, so this is where I went wrong. But uh, we've learned that now and we're going to avoid. But I mean, just to. To go through the year, I mean, look, it's September was like 1.5k loss, uh, but I'm still 42.2k up on the year. Um, in general, in terms of the month, um, look, it's night and day compared to how I used to be trading when I was on the the, the, the tens, the 15k a month. This is that the 15 year, all green days every month. And it was simply because in September, I just found myself like trying to make money and I couldn't. So like, took an immediate 3k loss no that's no this is um no sorry yeah this is it so struggled in the opening days took a 600 loss started right on the month got frustrated held a stock and um, we can go through that stock in a minute i'll go through i'm basically gonna go through three trades with you guys on the 4th of september and then try to make it back and on the 8th lost again and then it's basically down eight grand it's down eight grand in the opening two weeks and the month was done so did quite well to like get me composure. I've took a bad loss now. I, I know I can come back from it. Uh, I came, pulled it back and made 800, then 4.3, which is like 5.1. Then another 1.2, 6.4. 4.3, 5, yeah, 5. Yeah, I made like six and a half grand back of the maybe five, five, six, seven, eight that I'd lost. But then including this as well, that's another one. So basically made the whole loss back. I'm a few hundred, maybe about three, four hundred short of making the full eight grand back. I've made about seven back from this day. Um, 
so it was a good lesson but it goes back to what i was explaining the data that i've short got on gap as and i've tracked over 200 of them honestly three to one of the gap as with a heavy volume day will will fail one one and three will maybe go with less volume we're talking 20 percent will go and 80 percent will fail it's a very very high failure rate but that that bias doesn't take into account that the stock can go 30 40 50 60 percent uh intraday and, and often 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 will so i mean when i was trading and i mean i can just we can kind of just the trades save from the broker so the month started relatively okay um it quickly went wrong with SHLO, and you can actually see, you can't see it too clearly, but with SHLO, I'm shorting the first five minutes of a stock that traded 182 million volume. And then I made the same mistake just a few days later with LUB. I tried to get LUB up on stocks to trade, yeah. LUB I can get on stocks to trade, but I don't know if I can get the minute, but I made the same mistake like we're talking 160 million 160 million in terms of volume which means based on the data i mean this is gonna this is gonna go about at least 60 60 ish percent 70 percent from the opening price and then well it could go at least 60 percent but so i'm short well, it's opening around what 186 and it's coming up to around the 230s and i was just Again, I don't have the actual the actual entries here, but I was basically short pre-market and then adding around, adding heavily into the wash in the 170s only just to get squeezed. I mean, look, you're getting squeezed. If you're adding full size in the 175s, it's just getting squeezed up into the 220s, which is 180, 192, 210, 220. You're looking at at least about a 20, 30% move there, if my maths is right. So I just got squeezed again. I mean, the only other trade that kind of saved us was was Tesla, um, if you can find that. But Tesla kind of saved me because with Tesla, you can see the, I'll, I'll just show you the, the chart. So Tesla was quite a nice trade in the fact that, let's see if I can remember the day. I think it was this day on the, not the second now. It was around one of these days anyway, but it was battery day. It was the day of battery day. And um, I've got it on here. Ah, September 23rd. So let's see what that is. On this day, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, what I liked about Tesla was it's, do you know, buy the room, I sell the news. Obviously, everyone buys, everyone's buying in this channel on the like the 15 16 17 18 19 20 in anticipation of elon musk announcing something big on battery day on the 23rd so if he doesn't and he already and he kind of said that he wasn't gonna if he doesn't it's gonna drop but other than that tesla's already way overpriced and uh it it's already fell through on this day on the day of the battery day it's already fell through this technical support so i was watching the conference uh, and I was ready to cover if there was some sort of news, but watching the conference show me 3.6K, probably my biggest trade ever. And it was simply, this is shorts um, into the close. In the, in the, I was basically short from around 425, 430. I was probably around short from about 425. Yes, after hours was a bit dodgy, but as soon as the conference ended, you got the expected slam down to the 412s covered half, added into the pops, got all my size off really in the 390s, 389, 390, 391, 92, 93, 94. Really, really, really nice covers, yeah, uh, to make 3.6K. Now, in hindsight and in retrospect, I should have been leaving some size for like small positive outlets of news to add into this posh, whereas I didn't, I just shorted a little bit, uh, shorted the in the after hours and and left it but i mean it was my first time ever doing this so i could do it a lot better and i could have made maybe four or five k if i'd 
than leaving half size to average in RPR because then I'm taking like fifty dollars a share rather than thirty dollars a share. But it's still, I mean, look, I mean, I did go down quite a bit, but to go from like say four four twenty five average to be covering in the three nineties, I mean, no one's ever going to complain about taking thirty five bucks on Tesla. And I mean, I'm just going to leave you with that. It's a it's a short recap, honestly, uh, but I just. I really see the mistakes that I made as you got to make money when it's quiet. You've got to do less, not more. And I got a, like a confirmation bias from me data to see that three, four out of one, three, three, three out of one, four out of one goal, the rest fail on the specific patterns that I've been tracking with over 200 examples. And what I've come to learn is that uh, the intraday swings in the price action are so, so, so important. And just because something's going to fail, it doesn't mean it's going to stop people out, blow people up on the way up. And I feel like it's a real amateur, terrible mistake that I, that I could possibly make, but at least I've learned it. And the importance of volume of driving stock prices much higher um, from the opening price. And now that I know this, um, and I've got basically the data that shows the averages of how much a stock should go up from its opening price based on its volume, um, I should be able to go in with like, 10th size 12th size at approximately the averages cut it if it goes higher but average into the winner and you you should be able to see 20 30, the data suggests 20 30 40 percent gains uh, even more hold in the next day so this month because when i did the daily charts the initial data like does the daily gap and go gap and fail gap and hold i, I completed 50 percent of the research but now that i've got the intraday on every single gapper as well. I feel like I've got 100% the full picture. And if this data is correct and works, um, you should start seeing, I mean, my best month's 15K. I should beat that before the end of the year. I should hit at least the 20K a month before the end of the year if the data is correct. So do you think I can hit the 20K a year? Do you think that I'm, I'm accurate in what I'm saying is in the data as it sounds like a positive reflection? Just say yes, or if you think I'm wrong and I'm not going to hit that 20K and we did as wrong, hit no. But please like, subscribe, comment anyway. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm up like 250 bucks this month so far, so peace.